Hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com and today we're going to talk about the healing brush in Photoshop in about five minutes or so. If you enjoy the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can check out a ton more Photoshop tutorials that are there on the channel. And also, consider supporting the channel by picking up a copy of my Photoshop course. There's a link, well there's a link in the bio, but there's also a link up in the top corner of the video. If you hit the little eye icon, it's right there, ready and waiting for you. So without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at the healing brush. So here in Photoshop, we have two different kinds of healing brushes. Uh, one of them is the spot healing brush. One is the regular healing brush. We'll talk about the spot healing brush first. So this is fairly simple. Now you can see that it's given me this weird icon that I can't paint, and that's because I'm working with a smart object. So I need to create a new layer by hitting the new layer icon, and we can name this layer like blemishes or something like that. And because we're working on a new layer, when we're working with this tool, we want to make sure we have sample all layers ticked on. Uh, now you can just leave it ticked on all the time. If this wasn't a smart object, you could of course just paint directly on the layer, but you can see this says, look, you can't do this. You'd have to wrap Rasterize the smart object, which I don't want to do. Instead, I'll work non-destructively. This is actually the better way to work. Work on a new blank layer to heal up blemishes. And I can zoom in on her face, and let's say the model has requested that I remove some of the acne and stuff from her forehead. I can begin painting over those spots and getting rid of it. Now, I have this tool set to the Create Texture option, which is actually the option I use fewest. Uh, or least, I should say. It just kind of copies the texture of the surrounding areas. Content Aware is great. It kind of takes the uh, context of that part of the image and heals based upon what Photoshop determines to be the best way uh, to heal that little spot or get rid of that object or whatever it may be. And Proximity Match examines the pixels exactly around the area that you paint uh, and fills as best as it can. In the case of this skin, Proximity Match is probably going to do the best for us. In the case of removing large objects from your photo, like a, a boat from water or something like that. Uh, content aware might be a little bit better. And as for create texture, well that's its own little monster. You're not really going to use it much, but basically it tries to create a texture from the area that you are painting over. And it, I don't know, I don't use it very much. I don't find that it works all that well, honestly, with what I'm normally doing. So very, very quickly, you could go over this photo of this model or any photo you're working on. Rem remove any little blemishes simply by painting over them and choosing to get rid of them. Let's jump over here to another photo, and let's say I want to get rid of these two sort of antennas up here on the top of the football stadium. I'm going to zoom in on this one particularly up here. We're going to use not the spot healing brush, but the regular healing brush. And what I'm doing uh, is I'm working directly on the layer here. I'm not going to create a new layer, even though that is technically the best way to go. We're going to save the seconds here. Uh, and what I want to do is make sure aligned is turned on. This basically means that my sample point, so I need to hold down Alt or Option and sample the area that I wish to heal from. So let's say I, I want to cover this antenna antenna here with the sky, so I'll sample out of your hold down alter option, click to sample that, and then we need to like right click and make the size of our brush a bit smaller, maybe even a bit smaller than that, something like that, and then we can just begin painting over this antenna, and you can see that we're going to get a pretty nice uh, correction. Now we have a pretty obvious problem here, that being the edge looks like absolute garbage, and in fact the edge color is kind of influencing our entire heel. So I'm going to hit command or control Z to undo that. A couple ways we can combat this, well number one, we have this diffusion option up here, which basically chooses how much uh, the surrounding pixels are blended when you get to a, a hard edge like this, or really anywhere. It just, it, just uh, it affects sort of the blur, if you will, on the edge of your heel. So if we crank this up to 7, which is the highest, we kind of are going to get the majority or the, the maximum amount of uh, poof or spray when we come up to an, an edge like the edge of the scoreboard here. And you can see we have this like little explosion of poofiness coming out of there. Not at all what we want, but a diffusion of 1 was too much. So here's how you work with a hard edge like this. What you do is you actually sample on that edge, right? And you can see here, if we make our brush a little bit bigger using the bracket keys, we can see the bit that we're going to be laying down. And we can just line that right up and begin painting with the edge and then paint away all that stuff you don't want. And we get a perfect, beautiful edge just like that. So typically I find that I work with the higher diffusion number when I'm working with an image where the details are a little bit softer and I, I, I can use a little smoothness and I'll crank the diffusion way down low if I'm working on a very sharp image with a lot of tiny little details and I don't want any of that poofy blurriness. So I'm going to jump over to another photo here. And what we'll do is we'll just throw a new layer on top of this because it is a smart object. And let's say we want to move in here and just get rid of the trash down here. Well, this is really super duper easy. If we grab our healing brush, we want to, of course, make sure that we're sampling current and below layers because we're working up here on a blank layer. Um, I can turn this on. This will ignore adjustment layers. But we don't have any adjustment layers, so I don't need to worry about that. Uh, diffusion can actually be turned up here because there's not a lot of sharp details. And what I'm going to do is hold down Alter Option and sample like right where the very dark stuff meets the more browny green stuff. So I'm going to sample right there. 
I make my brush a little bit bigger and I'll just paint over where this cup is and something just like that is nice. Now we have that big dark spot, so I'll sample down here by the sidewalk, and I'll just try painting over that to cover that up a little bit. Maybe a diffusion of seven is a little large. We would want to knock it down to like three or four, maybe even five, and we could try painting over that again, and you can see it just clones that right out perfectly. We hide that little piece of garbage. Now, three last quick little things. I want to jump back over to the model photo once more. Uh, let's say we're dealing with flyaway hairs, like these, these few hairs here. Uh, maybe it's hairs over a solid background, a, a seamless drop that you're using or something like that. Uh, one of the ways that I will get rid of those is by using the healing brush tool, but I'll use the modes here, and I like to use the replace mode. There are a bunch of other modes down here. Honestly, I just don't use them that much. I use multiply and screen a little bit when I'm retouching hair. Um, it just If you mess around and play around with them, you'll kind of see. We probably don't have time to cover them in a lot of detail here in this tutorial, but I will use replace quite often um, and it just kind of tends to preserve the original texture of the brush and the detail of that area a little bit more than just the normal blend mode. So I could just choose right over here and just sample that and just paint away this hair. Uh, just a particularly this technique works well over a solid color background. So the more solid color your background is, uh, this is almost like a, a clone stamp tool with a little bit of blending. And of course, because we're working up here on a blank layer, you can always mask or reduce opacity or anything like that just to maybe make those blended hairs, you know, uh, make them just disappear a little bit and really just have the whole image blend together a little bit more. So you can see not perfect here. And in fact, I would probably want to go over this at the normal blend mode here and just try to pull these colors and tones together, blend them together a little bit more. Um, you can see, there we go. That's going to blend together pretty nicely. Uh, but really, like I said, this technique tends to work really well over a solid background where you maybe don't want to go in with the regular clone stamp. You still want a little bit of that blendiness of uh, the healing brush. And the second to last thing I want to show you here is in this photo, let's zoom in and maybe we have to just clean up the stone here along the top of this window trim. Well, we have a clone source panel here under window clone source. And the coolest thing I think about the clone source panel is when we're using any tool where we're cloning, what we can do is g grab our sample points. Let's sample right here, like right where that, that sort of mortar joint comes together, right? But let's say we need to clone this over on the other side of the window. Well, we have this little rotation option. We can actually say like, uh, we'll rotate this negative 50, right? And you can see what that's doing to my brush. I really probably need to go like negative 60. And you can see we're having our clone move from this part of the window over here all the way over to here. And it's going to mesh and meet up pretty nicely. So I can just line it up and I can begin painting and, you know, go in and tweak and adjust and keep messing with the angle and just get it perfect all along the edge of the window. So it's really pretty cool what you can do when you come in here uh, and rotate your clone, especially when you're working with edges that aren't quite straight. Super duper helpful. And when you're ready to return to normal, just hit the little revert or reset arrow and your cloning stamp or your healing brush will return to normal. Now, there are some people who don't like the new healing brush in Photoshop. And if you want to restore or get back to the old style healing brush, the Photoshop CC 2014 version, I believe is what this takes you back to. You can go Photoshop preferences, or if you're on the Windows machine, edit and preferences will be down here. Photoshop preferences and choose tools. And there is an option in here, use legacy healing algorithm for the healing brush. And if you turn that on, it will take you back to the old style healing brush. I actually tend to enjoy and prefer the new style healing brush. So it works just fine for me. And guys, that's it. It's maybe a little bit more like seven or eight minutes to cover the healing brush, but five minutes still sounds good. And if you're here for the first five minutes, chances are you'll stay for the last couple minutes. So for the healing brush and the spot healing brush really in Photoshop, I hope you've picked up a thing or two along the way. Hope you've enjoyed it for the spot healing brush and the healing brush in Photoshop. Guys, that's it. Get it. Got it. Good. Nathaniel Dodds and Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.